We're in the city of angels, or some people call it the city of sin. Either way, Bangkok in Thailand has a lot to offer these days. Join me on Buying Asia to find out why. Next. Hi, I'm Tim Murphy, your host for Buying Asia, the definitive guide for property in the Asia-Pacific region. In each episode, we'll review every country or city, allowing you to decide whether it's a go or no-go. To do this, we'll look at taxes, currency, mortgages, rentability, saleability, and finally, whether it's even legal to buy. It's a sprawling city of more than 12 million people, has 50 districts and a long river that splits it down the middle. Bangkok gets 10 million people a year, that's second only to London in terms of tourism. And despite recent political challenges, there's 89 billion US dollars of GDP in this city, so well worth a look. And in Thai, Bangkok has the longest city name in the world in the Guinness Book of Records. Try and get me to pronounce it, you've got absolutely no chance. Welcome to Bangkok. And first, beyond the sun and of course fun that can be had here, I want to get a sense of the economy in the face of a country that's had much political turmoil. Okay, John, so what's driving the economy here in Thailand? Exports, Tim. Uh, basically to either Korea, Japan, and, and on to China. And that's gone on pretty much uninterrupted since the sort of 2008 Western crisis. We had a, a very small dip at the beginning of 2009. Other than that, it's really been business as usual. Well, since that time, there's been some pretty big skirmishes here, but you know, politically and lots of sort of uh, stuff happening in the streets. You don't see that having changed things at all here? Uh, well, you know, Thailand's quite a sort of compartmentalised place. Some things go on sort of almost in oblivion. And as far as exports are concerned, everything happens really uh, east of what we call the Bang Pekong River, uh, which is sort of down on the eastern seaboard. And those guys sort of look upon Bangkok as sort of some strange, faraway place. So when you get demonstrations and things occurring in the city centre, everybody just ignores it and carries on. And business as usual again. So when foreigners are watching this on TV and they're thinking, you know, there's no way I'm going to invest in Thailand because this is going on or I don't want to buy real estate, you, you, you see that as, although it's not very nice to see, fairly immaterial to the sort of wider economy. Uh, well, I think on the safety side, there's no issues at all. I live here with my family. If, if I thought there was a threat, we'd, we'd move out straight away. Uh, and I think there are bigger issues outside that are really sort of driving the markets and driving the economy. Uh, and I think the political thing really is just a sideshow. The great joys of Bangkok is strolling through these kind of markets where you can buy arts and crafts, pirated goods, even the odd weapon or two. But you've got to know how to barter. What I want to know is, how much for the bat? But on a serious note, buying property in Thailand isn't always as straightforward as walking in with cash in hand. For starters, foreigners can't buy land outright, but there's always a way around it. So, Peter, said, tell me about the legal ownership structure in Thailand for foreigners. OK, you know very well that in Thailand, uh, foreigners cannot buy the land. But if you want to live in the downtown Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Phuket, you also can buy the condominium. I mean, you have a unit of the condominium, you buy in your own name. I think the rules then are, if as long as there are not more than 49 condominiums out of 100 owned by foreigners, foreigners can own legal land title, same as ties, freehold strata, very secure, yeah? It's, it's correct that uh, the foreigner can own in his private name just 49% of the total building. Okay, so what about landed properties? What about okay. villas and houses? For Thailand, foreigners cannot buy, okay. but you can lease. The maximum of the long-term lease now is 30 years. Okay. Then if you want to, to buy a nice piece of land on the beach, that you need to lease. Okay, so I, I spend two, three, four, five million dollars, which is very easy to spend in Phuket, right, or Koh Samui, build this lovely huge villa in 29 years after I've finished building it, some 20 years. Some, where, where, some farmer's going to come take it back off me. What happens at the end ah, of the okay. year? On the practice that we have an option between the seller, I can say the seller is been the owner of the land, uh, with the option to renew two times. Each time is 30 years. 
So maximum 90 years. Maximum is 90 years. Okay. And when are the government going to change that? I mean, you know, lots of foreign money pouring in here. Why don't they kind of you know, try and make it I'm more sure friendly? that uh, one day we will change it very soon because economic in Thailand is good. A lot of foreigners want to invest here and the door is open. We're just waiting for the government to say, okay, now we do. Okay. Good. I believe that it's 50 years or 90 years. Will be. So if I'm a foreigner looking to buy in Thailand and I'm watching this TV program now, what are the three or four key things I should be looking for? Okay, first thing, you need to go to visit the property. If you love the property, second thing you need is the lawyer because you are a foreigner, you cannot read Thai. Then you need a, a Thai lawyer to check title deed, the property, and uh, all the documentation important. Okay. Then when he confirmed that yes, then you can give the money to the owner. Time to talk about some property. We're going to look at the river now, which is the largest residential development in Bangkok. These guys, Steve and Milky, have been involved since 2007. How many units are you guys building over there? Uh, just over 800. Wow. Yeah. And how many have you sold so far, Milky? Over 70%. 70%. And talk to me a little bit about the challenges of the last couple of years. Have sales slowed down? Is there still a take-up? Certainly a take-up, both domestic and, and with our international regional buyers. Um, one of the challenges, not one of the challenges, but one of the things we did with the slowdown is we've topped off the building. We're moving forward, um, heading off to completion and starting to hand over at the beginning of next year, end of this year. Now this is obviously prime prime, it's overlooking the river, it's very close to the city. What kind of people are buying these units? Look, it's, it's a range. Certainly um, the, the river lifestyle and Bangkok being on the river, it has uh, quite a unique history with this river, the Chow Phraya. Um, buyers here with, with uh, both foreign buyers wanting to be on the river and more so with um, the Thai nationals. Okay, so it's a fair mix between foreigners and locals. Now I actually bought some units in here a few years ago, 2007 actually bought five units and sold four of them already. Made about 10-15% on each one and only put down 10%, so more than double my money. I've got one left, right? Let's talk about that one. You've been looking after me the whole time. I've got a two and a half thousand square foot apartment with a river view. Yes. Have I made some money? Of course you will. Final question, two questions actually. One, am I going to get a mortgage on this? Of course Certainly you can. can. Yeah. So foreigners, still no problems with getting mortgages on these units. And when it comes to it, so I've made some good money, should I be selling or renting? Am I going to get good rentals for it? Good rental yield, certainly. Uh, the tax rates are a little bit lower here and you can walk away with 6 to 8%, oh, sorry, 5 to 6%. Now, at the start of the show, you heard me mention that Bangkok is the largest capital city or largest city name in the world. Do you want to have a go at pronouncing it for me? Okay, we'll do. Okay, it's it's a bit long for City of Angels. <laughs> and when Buying Asia returns, a look at more Bangkok properties and a trip to the island resort of Phuket. Okay, time to look at some property. Scott, where are we? Today we're on Sai Sukhumvit, which is, um, we're in the district called Prakanong. 
uh, which is basically right on the, the heart of, of Bangkok and we, we're right on the BTS line which is the, the new subway system and which runs all the way across Bangkok, the SkyTrain, which is a fantastic feature of this. Is that, is that why they're building this here? I mean, you know, th these buildings are now seemingly coming along all along the train line. Is that where every developer's yeah. trying to build? I mean, that's where you've got to be now is on, on the BTS line because people, you know, just walk straight out of the unit, straight onto the SkyTrain, and you, you can get pretty much anywhere in the city within, within minutes. So it, it is a big selling feature of this project here. So those of you who are not into metrics, the biggest unit in here is about 800 square feet, which is really quite quite small so why is that you, is this more the inner city sort of single person sort yeah, of living yeah yeah it's you know it's just you know city living you know you not not tend to be you know big families what would live here you know be like sit, sit, city um, city buyers you know but you know that is the biggest unit here 78 square meters but but the delay outs are very very good you know it, it's got a sense of a lot bigger than 78 square meters okay and what kind of rental yields if these are small units what sort of rentals would we yeah, get on these you, you would get pretty average what would be in Thailand itself but for here you will get around six to seven percent per annum okay Okay, and is this an invest? You know, final question. If I'm a foreigner looking at investing in this kind of a property, I mean, we're only talking about for the smaller unit. Again, pretty cheap, three million baht, so about ninety thousand US dollars for that little studio unit. Pretty cheap. So, would this be a good invest investment product? It would, yeah, because of the location and good yields as well, and you know, it would be a good opportunity for investment here as well. Tuk Tuk's are one of the easiest and the cheapest ways to get around the city. But a massive word of caution, you're literally taking your life in your own hands. And now we're moving up to a two bedroom flat in another good part of the city. Let's take a look. Come in Tim, this is a 101 square metre two bedroom unit. Very suitable for uh, rental. Very nice. Um, Probably the majority of bars will actually be owner-occupiers. Okay, so they're mostly ties, that's right. and they're mostly owner-occupiers. I think that's always a mark of a good development, and certainly for investors wanting to sell on in the future, the fact that you've got owner-occupiers in here is a good sign. And what, how many units in the block? Just 132, which is a mark of a good quality development. Um, yeah. You've got quite a lot of privacy, you're not going to be crowded in the lifts and you're right in the heart of the CBD. And if I'm, I'm buying this unit, um, it's about 600,000, about 19 million bar, which is about 600,000 US dollars. That's right. What kind of rent am I going to get on this? Well, the returns would work out around about um, on a two bed, but, well, depending on how you fit it out, around 5%, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Okay. Now, David, you've been here over 20 years. I mean, how do you see the Thai property market now performing in the next few years? Well, I think it's undervalued because basically we've had ever since 2006 a political weight on the market shoulders. I think the market fully discount the political situation and ultimately the political situation in my view is easing and things would only really from here on get better. It's a very modern, efficient city. Yeah. It's still a city which has got its own character, but um, Bangkok is, a, is really a modern place. You're right in the heart of it. Welcome to Tim's Place, the section of the show where I look at something I've invested in, in the city. This is Sukhumvit 31, and I'm looking at Prime Mansion. It's very close to Prime Minister's residence, so I'm hoping the security's all right. Let's take a look. I bought this apartment a couple of years before it was actually built in 2007, and it's been something of an interesting investment. I'll explain why in a minute. So this is a two-bedroom apartment, about 1,200 square feet, and as you can see, it looks fantastic. The biggest problem I've had with this is not rented out the whole time I've had it. I reckon about half the time, and any property investor will tell you that doesn't make good news for property investment. It costs about 300,000 US dollars, so not too bad, and I've got a 70% mortgage on it. The thing I really like about this place, the fit out's absolutely fantastic. The facilities are incredible. It's swimming pool, gymnasium, great views over the city. So, not great rentals, but I'm gonna stick with it. This is Arawan in the centre of the city, otherwise known as the Four-Faced Buddha. Thousands of people come here every single day to pay their respects. Keep in mind that Buddhism is the number one religion in this part of the world. But as a foreigner, of course, we need to know a few other things as well. 
As a foreigner living in Thailand, what are some of the things you've got to look out for? Certainly, very easy place to live. Um, know how to count the money, know your exchange rate, uh, knowing how to order the right things at a restaurant. Uh, over the last 10 years of my time here, the restaurants have gone from strength to strength and a range of cuisines available, apart from the fantastic Thai food. Okay, you can see here, you can live by the river, you have sunshine, you have the smile from all over the country, and of course you have nice fruit, or the seafood, and also um, very, very good taking care of the Thai people, for all foreigners. Well, I think probably maybe the same, that um, Thais prize um, cool behaviour. They don't appreciate people getting very excitable or angry, and um, that's really a big loss of face. And uh, I think people need to be persistent. You've got to make sure you ask what you want and you know what you're doing. But a smile helps tremendously. And that's one of the best things about being in, here, in Thailand. What they need to be aware is that Thais are Thais. They, they will always do you know, things their way. So what I've noticed here, living here for so many years and being part-time myself, is that um, you have to learn to do some things, if not most things, the Thai way. This is a very traditional society. It's got pretty fixed ideas. So if, if you're polite, well-mannered, and treat them better the Thais well, they'll, they'll, they'll treat you exactly the same back. Final question. For you, what's the best thing about living in Thailand? Living in Thailand, of course, it's not expensive at all. And the weather is very, very nice. So you can't find everything completely like very good like this in Thailand, like somewhere else. Well, this is certainly one of the more picturesque ways to get around the city. And let's face it, we're avoiding that terrible traffic. Join me after the break on Buying Asia, where we visit Phuket. I'm in Phuket, 500 miles south of Bangkok, in what has been known over the last 10 or 15 years as Asia's premier resort destination. For starters, it's got its own airport and it's Thailand's biggest island. Recently, Fortune magazine announced it as one of the top five retirement destinations on the planet. Let's check it out, by an Asia style. It's got a population of a little more than 300,000. But as many people familiar with the region know, it's a hugely popular tourist destination. With a tropical climate, excellent infrastructure and room to build, many have come here to buy their dream homes, like this one. We thought we'd start at the top of the market. I'm reliably informed that this is the most expensive villa in the whole of Phuket. And it does look pretty stunning, I have to say. Martin, how much is this worth? This property is on the market for $11.8 million. Wow! And it's, this is literally the top of the pops, is it? It is, yes, yes. And tell me a bit more about the location. Where are we? We're on the end of Millionaire's Mile. You can uh, see that we've got a nice view of a patong from here. Um, it's actually in a private development itself. Only a few villas here. OK, and back in the day, a lot of Europeans are buying out of Europe. With the fact that the Europeans aren't quite as rich as they used to be, who are the buyers these days? Yeah, there's been a big shift in the demographics. There's much uh, less Europeans coming over to buy at the moment. I think they're, they're focusing in, in, in Europe. And our principal buyers are coming from Hong Kong, from Singapore, some from the, 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 the Middle East, and a growing number from China. So it's principally expatriate-based Asian buyers. It's not small, is it? It certainly <laughs> isn't. It certainly isn't small, so Tim. what's the size, then? This is on a land footprint of about 80,000 square feet. The constructed area of the, of the villa itself is 20,000 square feet, and it's got an internal size of about uh, 10,000 square feet. Just talk me through it then. Four bedrooms, what else has it got here? Four bedrooms, office. It's got a, a fantastic uh, master bedroom. It's got a separate dining area, a stunning TV room with panoramic views over Patong Bay and it's got a nice reading room, relaxing living room area, and it's got plenty of alfresco dining space. All right, so talk to me about the area then. How far from the airport and sort of other beaches around here? About 40 minutes from the airport. In fact, um, in, in terms of beaches, you've got quite a few beaches. You've got Patong, which is about 10 minutes away, but actually this villa has a footpath down to uh, a cove with its own little quiet beach, wow. so you're a, a 10 minute walk away down a, down a slope to a, to a beautiful private cove. Absolutely amazing. And, you know, why would anybody, 
you know, if you just think about the, the whole area and other places about, uh, around Asia, you've got so many different resorts now. Why would anybody pick, say, Phuket as opposed to anywhere else? I think Phuket's infrastructure is very well developed. It's, it's got a good international airport, good connections around Asia, which makes it appealing to people within, say, a four or a five hour flying distance from here, which incorporates China, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Malaysia, uh, the Middle Eastern countries as well, so it's very accessible. It's got, um, for people who want to live here permanently, it's got uh, good international schools, two good international schools now. It's got excellent health care, good communications, and no pollution. Okay, so before we look at something a bit cheaper, we're right next door, about 20 metres from the previous property. This bit of land's for sale. How big is it? 4,800 square metres, about 48,000 square feet. It's on the market for 1.8 million US dollars. Okay, so you could build something similar, not quite as big as the one next door. You could put a very nice property on this, but it'd probably be terrace going down to towards the, the water. How much? How, how to, build, to build it, how much oh, would it cost you, you reckon? Probably about three million US dollars, something like that. All right, so this is going to set you back about five million all in to yep. build it, to buy the land, everything. Yep. What would it be worth roughly at the end of that? You could probably get a 30% uh, return on that once you come to sell it. And even smaller homes offer great value. Wow, this is not down market at all, it's beautiful. So what's the size of this place then? 3,800 square metres, constructed area. Okay. It's in a land plot of 6,400 square feet. Individual property. Is there any such thing as a small place in Phuket? I mean, that's still a pretty sizable property, right? That's the luxury of Phuket. Okay, so what would this cost me? It cost you 630,000 US dollars. Okay, so if you're advising somebody about coming to Phuket to buy a property, what are the key tips? Find a good location, find a, a good legal representative, um, make sure you thoroughly investigate your developer or the owner of the, the property that, that, that you're buying, and then uh, move quickly with a transaction. Pretty simple, eh? Now Phuket's actually divided into three separate parts. The landmass is actually bigger than Singapore. But buying real estate here is a little bit more complex than Bangkok. Here with me today is James Alloy who's going to tell us all about it. So there's three different types of purchasing process here. Yes, there are. In terms of the sort of underlying land. Explain that to me. Well, land in, in Thailand generally, you have Chino title, North Sam Ga title, and North Sam title. Those are the three main titles that we're looking at and some are better than others, so how does that work? Well, it really depends. Each of those are very, it varies between how they are measured and the boundaries are set out. The most secure is Chino title. The Chino title is measured by GPS system. The boundaries are securely fixed. Um, but even that being said, all three titles can be freely transferred. Okay, so if I'm buying property and I go for my Chino title, then there's this issue of how I buy the land. So That's right. Obviously, you can buy it as a 30-year as a, a lease, or some people set up companies. So talk me through the best way of doing it. Normally, normally we would advise buyers looking in Phuket that the best known option for purchasing is the long-term lease. The long-term lease currently in Thailand is a 30-year lease. It can be renewed, and it's well known by the authorities, completely legal structure. Okay. That being said, some investors that have Thai shareholders, Thai partners involved, will look to set up a Thai company and a Thai company can also own freehold land in Thailand. As I mentioned before, buying property in Phuket can be a bit challenging. A good friend of mine, Peter Grimes, started building his place four and a half years ago and he's not been plain sailing. Let's have a chat with him. Good, good to see you. Good to see you too. Nice, welcome. nice welcome place. To Very you. nice. Very good to see you. Welcome, come in. So you've had a few challenges then, mate. Uh, yeah, we've definitely had a few challenges. I think whenever you uh, you design and build something, uh, there's a lot that uh, that happens that you don't expect at the beginning. But uh, it's been a bit of a labour of love, and uh, I think it would be fair to say that we would have done a few things a little differently. But with hindsight, as always, with, with as hindsight, always. Exactly. So, when you originally started planning this, how long did you think it would take to get it built for you? Well, you know, in the design and build phase, I think we, we weren't in any particular hurry. We, we wanted to get it right. So, I, you know, we were expecting it to be a couple of years. It's been okay. a little longer than that. <laughs> Have you aged a bit during that time? Oh, yeah. I had a full head of hair when we started. 
So talk me through some of the challenges then. You mentioned before about architects. What, what were the major challenges here? Well, I think there were you know, a couple of big challenges from my perspective. One was, was you know, sort of dealing with the architects. I mean, you know, they, they like to, to put very pretty things down on paper and the practicalities of then actually having a functional living space, you know, I found uh, a, a difficult to bridge. So we spent some time working through and making a few changes which, you know, we felt were very important to comfortably living here rather than looking at something that was fantastic. A couple of questions. So, what's it run, if you don't mind me asking, what's it run you to financially in the end? Well, um, it, a, a, about a million US. Um, and actually, that's one of the few things that sort of came in on where we expected it to be. And I'm, you know, obviously very pleased about that. Um, I think, again, if you're building in a, in a foreign country, another one of the, the things to be wary of is uh, exchange rate movements and obviously the bar to strengthen, so that had a little bit of an impact on us. Uh, but generally it's coming on, on budget, so f one thing I'm very, very grateful for. Okay, final question then. Uh, you've done a lot of work on this, you've spent a lot of time on it, as you say, a labour of love, yeah. quite a lot of money. <laughs> Was it worth it? Oh, I think absolutely. When you take a look around and the sky's as blue as this and this, you've got the pool out here, kids love it. No, absolutely. As I say, probably would do one or two things differently, but overall we're absolutely thrilled to be here. So as the sun sets on Phuket and Bangkok, let's hear what some of the locals have got to say about the future of Thailand. This house is very nice. We very open. Then check. I believe that now Thailand is open the big door, and you can come to live like a, your second home. Phuket's an, an island, very much like uh, Singapore. It's not getting any any bigger. So obviously, the way that it's managed going forward requires some 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 thought. But. There are certain rules and regulations in place that uh, govern um, the uh, real estate market and property development, and that's intentionally placed to make uh, make Phuket uh, a green environment with uh, that's a, that continues to be appealing to foreign visitors. So I think it will go. It will continue to, to develop. We're seeing more infrastructure coming in place, road improvements, the airport improvements as well. I think healthcare is in, improving over here. As you can see, Bangkok and Phuket have plenty to offer, but there are complexities underneath the surface. So what have we learned? Foreigners can't buy land outright, but they can lease. Yields are an excellent 5 to 8%. However, while renting and selling is relatively easy, financing is almost impossible. So because of a lack of leverage and a problem owning as a foreigner, I would say for now, Thailand's a no-go.